Hey guys, check it out. It's the brand new Hyundai Santa Cruz. And we have this for a long-term review. Hyundai lent it to us for a year. And we've had it now for four months and put on 4,000 miles. So I've gotten to really know it well. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything I love about it and some things I don't, and especially the one thing that is driving me crazy. So let's start with everything I love. And that of course is the fact that this is a Tucson, which is a great crossover, but with a huge difference. Come on with me. So up to here, it's basically a Tucson. Same powertrain, same all-wheel drive system. But when you get back here, this is where it gets fun because now this is the new compact size of pickup truck. It only has one other competitor, and if you're into trucks, you'll know that that's a Ford Maverick. But basically, you get a Tucson with a bed, and that's a very good thing because this bed is incredibly useful. So, for instance, you can use it to do things like, for me, haul oh, my wife's Hello Fresh to the recycling uh, bin. But there's a special little hidden feature under here, which I think is very nicely done, and that is kind of like the ridge line. It has a little hidden compartment that you can use to put, I don't know, a little tailgating libation, in other words, the drink of your choice, because you can put ice in there, and there are little I call them spoons, but little stoppers that you can use to empty it out if it gets wet. Or let's say you're into surfing or mountain biking and you get all stinky in your wetsuit or you get all stinky in your mountain bike gear and you don't want to have it in the car, you can throw it in there. I suppose you could also throw things like, well, Indian food, which tends to stink up the car, even though I love Indian food. But it's a good size bed. Obviously, it doesn't compete with things like a full-size truck, so you're not gonna get two motorcycles in here, but you will be able to use it for mountain bikes, for pretty much any form of recreational equipment that you can think of. Uh, and that's probably one of my favorite features of this truck. All the utility of a pickup truck with the front of a crossover. Now, speaking of the front end of this car, let me show you a thing I don't love that much. Now, we have put, uh, from our friends at WeatherTech, a little liner in here for Blazy uh, because we do transport them in this. Uh, and that's another thing I love. A regular pickup truck is tall, let's say nine to 10 inches of ground clearance. This doesn't have that much ground clearance, so Blazy can jump in there without any problem. But there is an issue, and that is this back seat is a little bit too upright for me. And that's a problem with many midsize and compact pickup trucks. So I'm gonna sit behind myself and keep in mind I'm tall. But you'll note that I really don't fit, at least not with my feet, and my back is pretty straight up. So if you're over six feet tall, you may find the back seat a little bit cramped. But it is a compact pickup truck, so I suppose if you want something bigger, you may want to go to the midsize. Now under the hood, uh, there are two optional powertrains. They're both 2.5 liter sized four cylinders, but this one has the optional turbo, which is the one you want because it puts out 281 horsepower and 311 pound-foot of torque. Uh, and it's a relatively heavy vehicle, so especially up here at a mile above sea level, the turbo gives you that additional grunt that you can not only keep up with traffic, but go relatively quickly. There is a downside to when you get this turbo, 2.5 liter, and that is you have to pair it with an eight-speed dual clutch, and I'm not in love with the dual clutch, especially for off-roading, it tends to overheat. It also has kind of a uh, contentious relationship with the powertrain when you floor it sometimes between the turbo lag and between the dual clutch figuring out, you know, that you want to give it all the beans. It takes a little bit of time. Once it gets going, though, the dual clutch just rip shifts. Uh, but for a pickup truck application, I would much rather have the eight-speed traditional torque converter automatic that you get with the smaller 2.5 or non-turbo. So for me, the ideal combination would be the bigger engine with the eight-speed traditional automatic. Uh, but for whatever reason, Honda decided to put the uh, dual clutch in here. So that's your only choice if you want the bigger power plant. Now, design-wise, of course, uh, Hyundai calls this kind of the warrior shield. Imagine a big shield in the front. Uh, and it's unusual. What you end up with, of course, is kind of this new modern style where the main lights are down here uh, and the driving lights are up here. At night, all these light up. Uh, and you will not mistake this for any other car coming down the road, except, of course, for a Tucson. It is very unique, and I've gotten to really like it. There's also kind of a lot of interesting angles that intersect in interesting ways uh, that give it kind of an appearance of uh, 
modern ruggedness. And then, of course, because you have to have Easter eggs nowadays, there are Easter eggs hidden, like right there. There's a little pickup truck Easter egg uh, throughout the car. Uh, now, let's talk about the model lineup. There are a number of different variations of this car. It starts at about $25,000. Uh, this is the SEL Premium. Uh, spec'd out, it's about $37,000, so it's not cheap. Uh, of course, there's another one above that, and that's the Premium. So we're one above, one below the top level. Um, I also like uh, kind of the blacked out wheels. I would prefer more rugged tires. And that's another thing that I'm not too thrilled about. This is, of course, the EPA numbers. Uh, 19 city, 27 highway, but uh, in regular city driving, you're more in the low 20s than you are in the high 20s. Uh, so if you're expecting great fuel economy, um, this is a pickup truck and you ain't gonna get it. Uh, so let's go on uh, and take it for a bit of a ride uh, and tell you what I love about the way it drives. Here's one other thing that I don't love about this car, and that is you really have to stomp on the brake. I mean, really have to stomp on the brake to actually start the car. Let's see if you put your foot gently on the brake. Yeah, yeah, nothing happens. See, it says press brake, and I am pressing the brake. So let me, like, like stomp on it like this it is a 1960s four-wheel drive manual truck that is hurling down the highway <laughs> with manual brakes. That gives you an idea of how hard you have to push on the brake before it'll engage the start-stop button. Now that could just be this car. I don't know if they all do that, but uh, certainly this one does it. So let's talk about how it drives. I said that there's just a little bit of uh, disagreement, shall we say, between the dual clutch uh, and the little uh, 2.5 liter turbo. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. So I'm going to pull onto this road here and then I'm going to floor it. And we can do a little manual count to see how long. Oh, you can really see the dust now. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this review. But let me pull onto this road uh, and uh, I'm going to floor it. Uh, I'm just going to stop here for a second. The light's still green. I'm just going to floor it. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. There you go. Once it hits, it hits hard, but it takes a while to hit. Now, the steering uh, is uh, fine. It's uh, about the right amount of effort. Uh, the braking is also uh, fine. Let's face it, this is not going to be a vehicle that you're going to use uh, to do any real spirited driving in, but it's comfortable, it's confidence inspiring, uh, and it's a relatively easy uh, vehicle to live with, which means that it's easy to get in and out. All the controls are ergonomically placed in places where you'd expect them, and it's not something that where you're going to be like scratching your head and you're going to be saying to yourself, oh, I wonder how I. Uh, turn up the heat or turn on my heated seats. Overall, I also love, and this to me is very important, the things that you touch on any car to me are the most important because I think the Japanese like to say, what's the most important uh, thing on a vehicle? And the answer is the door handle because it's the first thing you touch. And in a way, I agree with that. And this steering wheel is actually very nice. It's thick um, and it does have pad shifters, which I guess if you're a much younger person than me, <laughs> You might actually use while driving, but I let the car do its own shifting. Uh, and like I said, in general, the, the dual clutch does a nice job. Oh, look at this. We've got a Honda, a Ridgeline coming down the road. Uh, and you might be wondering, how does this compete uh, with the Honda Ridgeline? And the answer is it really doesn't because the Honda Ridgeline is uh, obviously a mid-sized truck and this is a compact truck. So imagine if you uh, kind of took the Honda Ridgeline and shrunk it down just a little bit, then this is what you'd get. That's the segment. But right now, like I said, there are only two cars in the segment, and that is this car uh, and, of course, uh, the Ford Maverick. Now, I do like the interior of um, the Santa Cruz. Uh, obviously, it's very similar to a Tucson. Uh, you do have instruments that are relatively straightforward and easy to understand. You also have hard buttons for things like the uh, temperature controls. And hallelujah! I have a volume <laughs> hard button. Uh, an interesting side note about this car is that it, while it does have cruise control uh, and lane centering, it doesn't have adaptive cruise control. So without adaptive cruise control, you really have no ability to do um, what is basically 
level one and a half autonomy where you let the car kind of drive itself where you keep your hands on the wheel because uh, it will run into the car ahead of it. So for some reason, they've decided to give a cruise control and lane centering, but not adaptive cruise control. Maybe you have to go for the premium to get that. Now, there are some other nice features, uh, like, for instance, the heated seats, a center locking differential, hill descent control, uh, cameras all around. Uh, and if you look behind me, I think you'll see kind of this pattern in the stitching uh, of the uh, seats. I like it. It's kind of rugged uh, and yet not fancy, so it feels modern without feeling kind of overwrought. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that there is one thing that I absolutely can't stand about this car, uh, and this is something that might be a deal breaker for me, and I hate to say this, but this piano black just gets covered in horrible amounts of dust. I mean, it's everywhere. It's every place I touch is just incredible amounts of dust. Every screen is covered in dust and maybe it's just me, maybe it's my OCD. Uh, every time I see this dust, I can't help but want to wipe it down and it just kind of is a dust magnet, it just attracts this stuff. So uh, I know that Piano Black has become, see I'm doing it right now, I know that Piano Black has become kind of the go-to uh, way that car designers are making cars feel expensive uh, and premium, but uh, there's just way too much of it here, uh, and it's a trend that has to die. Uh, obviously, with the lower trim levels, uh, you would get uh, different materials, but that would be my biggest complaint. Otherwise, all the materials in here are nice, so, you know, not a lot of, well, maybe here, not a lot of cheap plastics, uh, soft where you want it to be soft uh, and since this isn't the top of the line model we do have a traditional volume knob you'll lose that if you go all the way to the top of the line model uh, so come on out with me and i'll give you my uh, four month uh, final uh, thoughts on this vehicle all right so would i buy this car hell yeah i love the fact that it's basically a crossover with a really cool and important difference it doesn't have that covered area it's got a bed and that makes it so much more versatile from carrying motorcycles to mountain bikes to all your gardening supplies i have brought numerous things back and forth from home depot in this vehicle and to be honest you feel much more at home at home depot in a pick em up truck now uh, i did complain of course about the piano black interior but you know what uh, if you have a wet rag and if you're not OCD like me, you can live with it. Um, the powertrain is uh, strong. I would prefer the automatic, uh, but we're going to get to have this car for another eight months. Uh, so be sure to come back when we actually can give you complete numbers on fuel economy, on maintenance. And by the way, if you're wondering, zero maintenance, zero issues. Um, it's been rock solid for the first 4,000 miles. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Check out alltfl.com for more news, views, and of course, Santa Cruz reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.